Hello again. So we are still in chapter 13 for business math. This is lesson 3.3, um, employee benefits. So, um, as always, make sure you're reading through the section so you understand what it is they're asking you to do. There's a lot of examples in this section for these types of problems um, that they're going to have us do on this. This worksheet doesn't prepare you to calculate all of this information. You definitely need to look at the textbook, go through the examples to understand what it's asking you to do. Um, so that being said, uh, they do give us, you know, a little summary here at the top here. So the number of benefits offered varies from one employee to the next. The ratio of the total values of the benefits to the annual gross pay is known as the rate of benefits. So the formula is, um, here's rate of benefits that they just told us. So it's total benefits divided by annual gross pay. So um, this is just a number to help you compare to um, when you're looking at positions, you know, to know basically which company gives you better benefits based on the pay. Okay. Um, so to find the rate of benefits in the table below, round to the nearest tenth of a percent. So for one through six, they give us total benefits. They give us annual gross pay. This one's pretty darn straightforward. We're just going to plug it into the formula they just gave us. So we have total benefits divided by annual gross pay, and that will give us our rate of benefits. Remember to convert it to a percentage. You're going to get a decimal when you divide these. Um, you can multiply by 100 or just simply move the decimal over two times, and that will give you your percentage because that's what they're looking for here um, uh, is a percentage. Um, all right. So I'm going to let you guys go ahead and finish that table off. Not a crazy calculation on that one. Um, so we're going to move down to the bottom here, or down to number seven and eight, where they don't give us all the pieces. Um, so we're going to have to calculate the total benefits for number seven and number eight. Um, and number eight has four different um, employees that we have to calculate it for. Uh, so one... Fuentes is a computer programmer. His annual salary is $32,190. Benefits he receives consist of $1,881.73 in vacation time, holidays worth $1,287.60, oh, health insurance premiums of $2,300, paid by the employer, and security of $1,995.78, um, and Medicare of 466.76 and employment insurance of $541.06. So quite a few um, pieces of information there. They're listing them all. We don't have to calculate each one. All we have to do is total them because the first question is what are the total benefits? So we're just simply going to add all these benefits they just told us. We have the 1,881.73, the 1200 here, the 2300, the 1900, 466. I'm sorry, I'm rounding those as I say them again. Um, 541. So we're just going to add all these together. That will give us our total benefits, right? We're just adding the benefits together. That they already told us that he has. Um, and then the rate of benefits, we're just going to go back and use this formula again. Once we know the total um, benefits paid, we're going to divide by his annual salary, which again, they already told us. So that one, not too bad. They're starting it to make you do a little bit of calculations on that one as far as getting your total. Um, number eight is gonna take a, a couple extra minutes here because um, for each one of these pieces, they're gonna ask you to calculate it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on manager here and I'm gonna let you fill out the rest of the table. So um, all they do is they tell you to complete the, the benefits chart for the corner um, luncheonette employees and round to the nearest cent. So all they do is they give you a position and an annual wage, and they want you to calculate the rest of this. If you have not read the section and you haven't looked at the examples, you probably would not know what to do on this one. It would look like there was missing information. There's not. We have plenty of information here. We just need to start applying um, the basically the annual wage to each either week that it would cost them to give vacation or each day that it would cost to give them sick pay, things like that. So um, I'll go ahead and start looking at the calculations here. 
So if we want a, a two week vacation, what we need to know is how much does he get paid every week? So we take his 57,000 and we divide by 52 because there's 52 weeks in a year. So this tells me that he gets paid $1,105.77 every week. If he gets a two week vacation, that means that the, the business is paying him an extra, and I'm gonna write times two here, like that, times two. Um, so they're paying him an extra $2,211.54 that he's not working for, he gets that for free, it's vacation. But it's costing them money, so they call this a benefit, right? So we're going to write this in here. Sorry, I know it's a little. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so it's a little easier to write. Move this up. Okay. Let's see. 221154. All right. So again, two week vacation. All we do is we take the salary. Divide by 52, that tells us how much they get every week. And we want two of those. So we just multiply by two. So that's how we get the two-week vacation. 3.6% of workers comp. So again, we're going to go back to his annual salary or her annual salary. They're not telling us it he or, or she. We're going to multiply by 3.6%. Um, and that will give us, let's see, $2,070. So they give them $2,070 in workers' comp. Um, Eight-day sick leave. So just like we did with the two-week vacation, we need to know how much this employee receives on a daily basis so that we can figure out how much it's going to cost the company to give them eight days in sick pay. Um, so we're just going to take this amount like this. We're going to divide by the number of days there are in a year. And I want to make sure, oh, you know what they're doing? Instead of dividing by the number of days total in the year, what they're doing is they're taking this amount. We already know the weekly amount. I forgot that's the way I calculated this one to get the exact amount they're looking for. If you started the way that I was doing it, I, I was going to divide the salary by 365 to bring it down to a day. Um, the problem with that is it includes weekends, and you don't get a paid on the weekends, um, generally. Usually it's a five-day five, five day weekday. Um, so what we want to do is take this, how much I get paid each week, and divide it by five. That way it's not including the weekends, because otherwise you'll, you'll get kind of a watered-down number, basically. Um, so if we divide by five here, let's see, we get at my table here on my notes. I just multiplied by eight. So I wanted to give you the number here real quick. Equals. All right. I hit times, I think. Or I had something else in my calculator. So make sure you're paying attention to if you get a number. Like I just got a 5,000. Tells me I probably hit multiply instead of divide on accident. Pay attention to the logic of the numbers that you're, you're looking at. So you should know if you're dividing by 5, you're going to get a number that's probably quite a bit smaller than what you started with. 5 times smaller. All right, so he gets paid two hundred twenty-one dollars and fifteen cents every day. Remember, there's eight sick days, so I'm going to multiply by eight, so I know the total. So times eight, we get one thousand. And I'll write it here too: one thousand seven hundred sixty-nine dollars and twenty-three cents. So one seven six nine twenty-three. All right, so we also get FICA at six point two percent, Medicare at one point five percent. Um, and then we're going to total our benefits. So FICA, we're just going to take this amount and we're going to multiply by 6.2%. Um, we did go through uh, where we calculated all the um, gross and net pay for employees. So the 6.2%, and I'm assuming they would apply this year, there is a cap to FICA. So it's $97,500. But in this case, nobody goes over that amount for the annual wage, so we don't necessarily have to worry about it. But it, it could potentially come up in this situation, um, especially for maybe one of the review, review problems Sorry, from the book. Um, so just keep that in mind. It does have a cap only on FICA. 
All right, so when we multiply this, and I'm just going to go ahead and write it right up here, we get 3,600, sorry, 565. That's what I get looking back and forth here. Um, we're going to do the same thing for Medicare. We're just going to multiply 57,000 by 1.5%. And we get a much smaller number. Again, definitely, you know, pay attention to um, kind of the logic of the numbers when you get them. If you're multiplying by 6.2% and you get 3,565, when you multiply by 1.5%, you should get a much smaller number. You're multiplying by a much smaller percentage. So pay attention to that logic there. Um, so to get total benefits, now that we've calculated each one of these benefits, we're going to just total them up. So all we have to do is add all of these together. So we're going to add and that'll give us our total benefits. Once we have our total benefits, we can divide by our annual wage and this is just what we did at the top here a couple of times already. So we're just going back to this equation they gave us at the top here. So we have total benefits divided by annual gross pay, which is 57,500 and that'll tell us the rate of benefits. Uh, so this one definitely has a little bit more to it than just kind of the basic formula that they're giving you here. Again, if you have not read through the section, this may not have made sense to you at first. So hopefully either the video or looking at the examples um, helps you understand what they're looking for on how to calculate two-week vacation um, sick leave. These other ones don't tend to be as confusing. It's usually these two that throw students off. So anyway. I hope that helped. I'll let you finish off the table here, and I will see you in second and four.